What's going on, buddy? My name is Welcome back to the video. Today, I said we're going to get into historical causes of diffusion. So, we're going to look at colonization, imperialism, and trade, and how they have historically caused uh, diffusion. So, we're going to look at some examples for these, and then you should be able to apply them uh, by getting the hang of these examples. So, let's get started with the Berlin Conference for Colonization. So, this was a meeting in 1884 to 1885 for European countries to determine who colonizes what areas of Africa. And this is for economic purposes because they're going through the Industrial Revolution. They're seeing major economic growth and population growth. So they wanted the resources in Africa, gold, ivory, maybe some crops, slaves, and they want to continue their economic growth in their European countries. They might trade these, they might manufacture them, they might make a value-added specialty crops or luxury goods, more Unit 5 concepts. Uh, and yeah, so they decided who gets what parts of Africa and they decided this and made a map like this and this is the outcome of it. So the country for what part of Africa they controlled is there on the map. And of course people from these countries went to Africa uh, and regulated a bunch of Africa <laughs> there. And we see this reflected in Unit 6 uh, by how cities are laid out in Africa. Very, very cool. Now, cultural traits from Europe have diffused to Africa through a variety of diffusion types. Now, let's look at this. So, uh, different countries in Africa today have uh, official languages that are the official languages of many European countries. So, in Angola, which is about right here, um, where the yellow is, is has an official language of Portuguese. Now we can see here Portugal colonized there. So Portugal's influence uh, of their culture has diffused to Africa greatly, greatly and made Portuguese one of the official languages of Angola. And Nigeria, which is about right here, kind of in the blue and red in Western Africa, uh, has an official language of English. We can see here Britain has colonized in Nigeria historically, because of the Berlin Conference. So the official language in Nigeria is English. And then Mali, which is in the blue here for France uh, in West Africa, was colonized by the French. And their official language is French. Now, what types of diffusion brought these languages there? Well, this could be a mix of relocation contagious. Sorry, just relocation contagious. Sorry, I thought there was a third one. Um, so relocation, people from Europe coming here. And then contagious diffusion, uh, once it comes here, People are now learning these languages, maybe because they are forced to, or because they kind of need to, to sell their food. In the cities, there is a market that is specific to the colonies from Europe, and to trade and get economic growth in these countries, they have to be able to trade with the Europeans, so they got to learn their language. All right, now we go to the next part. Now we're going to get into another type of uh, historical cause of diffusion, and this is imperialism. And our example is going to be America imperializing Hawaii. So in, in 1898, the USA officially claimed Hawaii to be theirs. No colonies were set up, and their boundaries for the country have increased. So they've increased all the way to the Pacific Ocean. Nowadays, that gives them 200 nautical miles of ocean boundary, uh, and their powers have increased to Hawaii. So they have control over the water uh, and surrounding areas of Hawaii. So this is not a colony. This is officially a part of the United States. That's kind of a difference here. Uh, they are extending their territory, their boundaries. Colonies are considered a part of the country, but still kind of have their own name and stuff like that. Uh, and we can see here uh, today that we're not really focusing on language in this example. We're focusing on the cultural landscape uh, previous video and previous topic for AP Human. And we can see here, we see a lot of, you know, popular culture, American culture, uh, technologies, we can see helicopters in here, that are in Hawaii, because uh, this landscape is reflected on Hawaii. So if this didn't happen, maybe they wouldn't have all these technologies, these high-rises, their popularity, because uh, in Africa, a lot of countries became independent very, very quickly, uh, a couple decades later, and they're very... Uh, underdeveloped compared to those European countries. So, yeah. Now, we're going to get into this language because the number of native Hawaiian speakers is a thousand, which is a lot lower than it was in 1898 uh, and so on, and has decreased over time. And the dominant language of Hawaii is English because it's primarily American and is part of the United States of America, which does not have an official language, by the way. So we can see here the effects linguistically on Hawaii. And we're going to look at the, at a local scale of Honolulu, 
we're going to see here that we see a bunch of popular culture uh, and globalization in uh, the island. So I can see here Home Depot, Lowe's, 7-Eleven, Party City, things that I've seen here in the United States that are also in Hawaii. Costco is also here. Uh, maybe if they weren't imperialized by the United States, the, this would not exist. These uh, international companies may not be in Hawaii. And now we're going to get to our last little branch, and that is trade. And a really historical example is the Silk Road. So this caused uh, many things to diffuse. And the Silk Road went as far as eastern China to Europe, into Italy, Venice primarily, uh, and then, you know, to Turkey, to Istanbul, and kind of down into India. So it diffused. Diseases diffused. So we don't just see material culture diffused, uh, but we can see diseases diffused as well. Buddhism is a uh, religion that diffused. Religion does diffuse as well. Buddhism is a universalizing religion, which means it seeks to convert people. So that makes diffusion a lot more easier, uh, and it primarily diffuses through expansion diffusion. Silk and other goods, so it's called the Silk Road because of the Chinese good silk. And we see other goods diffused, like gunpowder, which is a big one. And this goes through stimulus diffusion because it changes its use uh, in the countries it diffuses to. So in uh, the Muslims in, uh, in the Middle East use it for cannons, and Europeans used it for primarily guns. China, which made, which made and founded gunpowder, did not really necessarily use it for weapons or harm. Now let's get into a little bit back into colonization and influence and look at lingua franca. So lingua franca is language that is used between two groups of people with unlike native languages. And here we have a map of historical British colonization and imperialism. And what I'd like to say is English is the dominant lingua franca. Swahili, French, uh, and Mandarin are other languages that are used as lingua franca, but English is the number one one. So let's give an example of English use as a lingua franca. So uh, Brazil wants to communicate with people in Spain. So people in Brazil primarily speak Portuguese, and people in Spain primarily speak Spanish. So they would both learn English to communicate with each other. That is an example of using a lingua franca. What is not a lingua franca? The United States, that primarily speaks English, talking to the United Kingdom, that primarily speaks English. That is not lingua franca. Now, how does Britain's historical colonization patterns contribute to English's role as a global lingua franca? Well, their previous colonization has diffused English to various continents in the world. It's brought it to uh, the United States. It's brought it to uh, Africa, all over Africa, Australia and Oceania, South Asia, Southeast Asia, other parts of Europe. Uh, they are part of the European Union. So a lot of them speak English to communicate with the United Kingdom. Uh, and, of course, the close proximity makes English uh, greatly diffuse the relocation diffusion. So this all contributes to English's uh, growth around the world. And since it has a high speaker, high amount of speakers around the world, of course, it makes sense for it to be used as a lingua franca. Because Britain had such a high influence on the whole world, they were the dominating um, entity for the longest time. Now, what are the effects of English's role as a global lingua franca? Well, let's say they came to when they came to the United States, people spoke various languages in the United States. The natives spoke their own language because English had a high role in the United States from the people from the colonizers and then of course people here that were born and then spoke English. This led to a decline in native languages. So this means we get a decline in our folk culture, our traditional culture in society. So that's also going to just increase the amount of speakers. Maybe people are going to uh, use English a lot more around the world, not necessarily in areas that English is the official language. Let's look at some examples, though. So every air traffic control tower in the world must speak English. That's because it's a lingua franca. Schools across the world teach the English language. So this is an example of South African classroom. They are learning English. This sign back here says, let's live. I can't read that because it's too small, but it's, it's in English, I promise. Uh, so schools across the world teach English because of its high use as a lingua franca. And then, of course, I talked earlier about a decline in native languages. So here we see native speakers in America. Now, what, what, the, what might the map look like if English wasn't as widely used? Well, we might see Oklahoma be a little darker shade of blue. Louisiana, Arkansas, Alabama might have a darker blue as well. Maybe these speakers 
could somehow control all of America. This would all be blue. I can't predict the future if this never happened. So that might be what the map would look like. And then there's also creolization. The blending of languages, particularly popular in native ones. And two examples of this is Spanglish and Cajun. Spanglish is kind of a mix of English and Spanish. So to park, the verb is like parquier. Uh, and in Spanish, uh, it's something a little different. But it kind of ends in the same ending in Spanglish and kind of starts with the same uh, starting in English. So it's just a mix of the two languages. Realization. Cajun uses a mix of French and English terms and native languages in kind of Louisiana of America, which is uh, prominently uh, has a lot of French culture because of previous French colonization before 1803. So that creates uh, Cajun. And yeah, and that's the end of the video. Thank you so much for watching. So yeah, this was the video. Uh, there's an FRQ on the screen if you want to do that. I say do it because it's helpful. you. There's some video suggestions if you want to do those. Uh, and yeah, please like, subscribe to the video. It's free. It really does help me out. I got more AP videos if you want to check this out. And I'll see you guys in the next video. Adios.